And for Mike this morning, Martin Strong with you. Our buzz line is 604-331-2899, 331-2899. How are you dealing with the cold? And uh, how are you dealing with Christmas in general? Uh, this this is kind of the, the zone between Christmas and New Year's. It's kind of a good time to relax after all that stress. And uh, it was kind of a stressful Christmas, the second year with health restrictions on festive gatherings because of the Omicron variant. And that just adds to all the stress that comes with socializing and the holidays. Who do we invite or not? Whose event invitation should we accept? And who should we not accept? And uh, how do we gracefully decline unwanted invitations? Uh, how do Basically, how do we make ourselves a priority during the holidays. And with me now is someone who can help. Nirmala Raniga is the founder and director of the Chopra Addiction and Wellness Center. And Nirmala is with us now. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning, uh, Martin. Thanks for having me on the show today. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I guess my first question is, what's the biggest mistake that uh, people make that we make during the holidays when it comes to our mental health? Uh, what is it? Well, the biggest mistake would be is like sometimes uh, we end up making huge, big plans. Uh, we have expectations of pe- from people. And uh, then we get disappointed when things don't go away. And the big one this year is, as we know, that people had planned to travel, to go out on holidays. We thought we had, we can travel. But the the virus, the Omicron, actually put a big setback for everyone. And that's a huge disappointment. It's the same thing with people had plans to have uh, their Christmas parties, get-togethers, family, friends, travel. Uh, there you go. We were all told we, we, we had to limit our numbers to six. And, of course, the weather itself, um, you know, back in November, we had the flood. Um, we couldn't travel the roads where uh, couldn't go into the interior. Uh, not only that, but with the current conditions, the weather being so cold and the snowfall, it, there, is, there is risk. So we have, um, as human beings, you know, we want to be happy. We want to be, be with family. We want to be with friends. We want to celebrate. That's our nature. And then we get disappointed when uh, things go sideways. And some of these things you have to, we have to really remember it's been beyond our control. Right. Expectations. That's such a big thing uh, when it comes to the holidays, especially with New Year's. Um, New Year's, there's a lot of pressure, I think, for people to do something really special on New Year's. What do you say to people who, who are thinking, oh, I, I've got to do something really, really great on New Year's Eve? Well, this year I will invite people maybe to uh, do self-care. Look after yourself. We, um, you know, this is one of the things where we, we forget that our mental health and well-being is so important. And while keeping things small is how can we do something fun with a small group of people, but also pay attention to ourselves. Um, when I talk about self-care, I, I really mean that taking that time for yourself, pay attention to what your body needs. Uh, if, yeah. it, if, if, if things are going to uh, cause stress and anxiety, then let's kind of look at things, what can give us relaxation. Right. Because I, I hear that phrase a lot, self-care and uh, taking care of your body. Uh, and and it's it sort of seems like a sort of a broad thing. But give, give me some examples of, of specific things that people can do right now that falls under the definition of self-care. Self-care sometimes may seem to some people selfish, but it, this is the most important thing one can do for themselves. Um, you know, being able to pay attention to your body because our bodies are always giving us signals. Take a break um, when when emotions come up that are uh, painful or if you are going to get angry, your body is 
giving a signal. How do you balance that? So what I would suggest is during, especially the holiday season, continue with a routine. Don't break your routine. Often people sleep in or don't get enough sleep. Sleep is such an important part of our healing. Get your average six to eight hours of sleep every day and try to get to sleep uh, uh, at a regular time. The second thing is, is meditation and mindfulness. An average human, human beings has about sixty to 80,000 thoughts a day. And this comes through all our five senses. And when we are anxious, it goes up to about 120,000 thoughts. So if we can take a little bit of time, it's not like, you know, hours a day, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, just sit quietly. And if you are not able to do a, 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 a mantra meditation, which is a, a sound vibration, maybe listen to a guided meditation or maybe just being being present with your breath, breathing in and out and just become aware. The other thing right. is mindfulness. Mindfulness is such a huge tool. Right. So mindfulness, more- that's, that's another word I hear all the time. So um, mindfulness, is it, is it just sort of understanding the signals that your body is getting, that kind of thing? Mindfulness is being present with all our senses. So for example, I'll give you an um, uh, example would be when you sit down to eat uh, your lunch or dinner, when you make your plate of food, you have salad, whatever you have on your plate, being able to see that in a way where all your five senses are present. So being able to visually see the food, then smelling it, then as you taste it, feeling the taste, smelling uh, and hearing the sounds of, of when you're chewing. Mindfulness is really when you are present with all your senses, you are aware of what's going on. Often we miss things because we are not present because our mind is wondering. It's either in the past or in the future. So it's a right. practice of bringing your senses in the here and now. And I guess that's a good way to, to kind of put a check on how much you eat. Because a lot of people Absolutely. during Christmas, <laughs> you eat so much. But I guess if you're <laughs> mindful, you sit down and you really, really concentrate, you're probably going to eat less, right? Yes, yes. And on, on that nature, you know, uh, one of the things we talk about is um, uh, nutrition, uh, you know, practicing um, healthy uh, practice during this time of the year, especially this time of the year, when we are stressed, we, we tend to overeat. Some people may not eat, uh, they would withdraw, but most people indulge into um, uh, uh, food, uh, sweets. Uh, one of the practices that, that uh, we uh, put together is called um, body intelligence, um, uh, bits, body intelligence practice where we include uh, six colors and seven, uh, six tastes and seven colors in our food and try to eat in a quiet place. Um, of course, uh, when you're at a party or at a get together, that may not be possible. Right. But, but also eat when you are hungry, right? Uh, yeah. When we are upset, we will emotionally eat and uh, yeah. sit, down, sit down to eat. Um, don't overeat. And a lot of people look at the gadgets when they're eating. They're not present. And this is Martin Strong sitting in for Mike this morning, this cold December morning. And how are you maintaining your mental health over the holidays? Let us know. Give us a call right now. Our phone lines are open. 604-280-9898. 280-9898. Tell us how you're coping. What are some of your uh, coping strategies? And maybe you have a question for our guest, Nirmala Raniga. She's the founder and director of Chopra Addiction and Wellness Center. And uh, we were talking about uh, mindfulness. And I thought this was great because if I understand this correctly, uh, you were talking about when eating, being mindful when you're eating. So you basically say when you look at a plate of food, for example, you should... uh, pick seven colors on that plate and sort of ponder those colors before you start to eat them. Yes, being able to visually see what's on your plate and uh, um, and being present with uh, what you have put on your plate. 
but also smell, smell the food. Uh, and when you take that bite, you really feel the taste and hearing the sound. Uh, this is called mindfulness and you're really present with the food. Like I said, often we miss that, you know, if we are talking with people, or if we are looking at the phones, we are not present. And the next thing we know, we have overeaten or yeah. we have taken too much food. So it's yeah. really being present. I think that's great advice. And uh, we have someone on the phone, Al from Maple Ridge. Hi, Al. Happy holidays to you. Yeah, hi. Happy holidays. Good morning. Um, I do want to say that I, I do practice, I try to practice, practice rather mindfulness from time to time, like meditation. And uh, I've taken some martial arts, and so I sit with my feet underneath my knees, and it's very relaxing to do that. Uh, but what I did want to say is that it's amazing that you have your guest on because, you know, we have like a rampant, we have two pandemics going on, obviously, the, the one with COVID and the one with mental health. I don't know how many parents I talk to and people that, you know, are, are completely suffering and it's gotten far worse. And I, I, I frankly think her services should be like covered by the medical system because just like you go to a doctor, I think you should be able to go to a clinic like this mm -hmm. and, and get the services that she offers. I, I think it's amazing. Well, thank you, Al. I, I think that's a, that's a great point. That's a, a very innovative point. And, and what do you think about that, uh, Nirmala? Uh, this kind of mindfulness uh, exercises, these kind of mindfulness exercises, things like meditation, um, a lot of people believe that they are, are, you know, important for your mental health and that they should be covered by, by insurance. Do you, do you agree? I agree 100% that... Uh... These are such valuable tools um, that can um, prevent people from actually going down that rabbit hole. And, and also, um, you know, medic medication is a tool, but I really strongly believe meditation is a better tool that if we can uh, have a practice and if we are supported through our healthcare system, where um, we are guided through uh, physicians, our healthcare providers, uh, it's covered by insurance. I think more and more people can access. However, I also want to say and share that there's a lot of um, information out also on YouTube where um, practitioners uh, are sharing these tools uh, to people and it's more readily accessible. Um, so it is, it's a very good um, uh, point from our caller, and I really appreciate his feedback that he's practicing mindfulness because it goes a long way, especially for your mental health. And and the other one is, I have to say, is movement. Uh, often we don't move enough. Um, exercise, whether it's yoga, whether it's Tai Chi, whether it's Pilates, it doesn't matter. Movement is so important for our body, especially with everything going on. That when, you know, when we feel depressed when we feel um, uh, uh, just in this place of uh, sadness, uh, when we do movement, our body releases, our mind, um, brains release chemicals that make us feel good. It gives us energy. These are natural ways of healing our body. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Another concept that, that I hear a lot about is gratitude. Um, stop, I, I guess, you know, in a way, it's a kind of mindfulness, but just stopping to appreciate uh, what is going on in front of you. Um, how important is gratitude in all this? Uh, gratitude is very important. And I, I, I think it's a simple practice that we can all put um, together in like a few minutes. Uh, asking ourselves this question first, who inspired me today? We have lots uh, of people who inspire us. It's not only uh, um, people, but looking today outside, the sun is there. That's an inspiration. I mean, we've had some really um, uh, weather in BC, uh, so much rain, uh, so much damage. But a day like this, when we look at the sun, we feel good. Uh, it's a natural healer. Uh, what brought me happiness today? Was there somebody yeah. who op opened the door? And uh, who made you safe, uh, provided you a sense of uh, safety or comfort or gave you peace? 
I think these are the questions if we can ask ourselves, uh, we can yeah. see a bigger picture. Nirmala, uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. you uh, I think you helped a lot of us get through the holidays. Uh, thank you very much. Once again, uh, happy holidays to everybody. Stay safe, take care. And uh, I think uh, we, we hope and pray that 2022 brings um, uh, wellness to all.